Welcome back to Up North at Four, and it's time for another edition of Northern Delights. We're joined once again by Chef Mitch Bielo with the Nicolet College Culinary Program, and you brought along a protege with you here this day, Mitch. Emily Fondi joining us. You're a student in the program, Emily. What made you decide culinary arts was your thing? What made you decide to pursue this? Well, I, I always liked baking, mm -hmm. so I kind of wanted to go down that path. Okay, so. okay. Well, here you are, and obviously you're being taught by Mitch, who he's taught uh, us a few things on the show. Um, any, uh, any good little tidbits that he's uh, given you so far? Um... There's been a lot during classes and field trips and oh, stuff. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll get into, like, the deep, dark, gritty details of Mitch in the classroom, maybe off camera if that works for you. Uh, but, Mitch, it, fall, it's here officially, if you can tell by the colors and the temperatures. What are we making today? Yeah, so uh, we're going to be, again, focusing on in-season. Yeah. Um, apples, of course, up in this, this part of the world this time of year. Um, so we're going to make some apple cider churros. Okay. Um, I know apple cider donuts are pretty popular up here this yeah. time of year, but yeah. we're going to put a little twist on it and, and go the churro route. I love it. So apple cider churros, obviously you're going to need apple cider for this. And we've already kind of got this thing going a little bit with uh, some melted butter. And you were mentioning to me that you want to always make sure, at least for this recipe, to melt your butter before you add any liquid. I know people at home might be thinking, why can't I just bring it all to a boil and melt the butter at the same time? You don't want to do that. How come? Uh, for a, a, a couple reasons, I guess. Uh, I like to melt the butter to know it's melted before I go in with the liquid, mm -hmm. um, just for the, the sake of not reducing that liquid. Okay. And then, you know, measuring out and following this recipe, we want to have the exact amount that we need of liquid. All right, so shall we get started? Let's do it. All right, so we got the butter melted already, uh, and then after that, what are we doing here? So now our, our butter's melted, we're going to go in with our cider and water. Um, so we're going to go a mixture of cider and water because um, I found that if you use all cider, the sugar content is a little too high, okay. and we don't get that crispiness out of the churro mm -hmm. when we fry them up later on. All right, and so this is, what, a 50-50 mix here? Yep, 50% water, 50% uh, apple cider. So we can get that in the pot. Might make a little noise. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. All right, so this is literally just butter, water, apple cider. Yep, so far. Um, and then we would crank that on high. Okay. Because we're going to be looking to get that to a boil. All righty, so the uh, cider water and uh, butter mixture is now boiling. The oil is about where we want it. That is removed from the heat. Mitch, Emily, what's the next step here? So next we are going to go in with our dry ingredients. Okay. Um, so we've got a uh, strainer here just to sift everything in mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't have any clumps. Okay. Um, that wouldn't be, make for a good churro at the end. I thought this was like for fencing practice. I mean, it looks a lot like okay. that, right? Are you a fencer? I, I, I can become one if we yeah. want to try that out. So, All right. Walk me through. What are some of these dry ingredients that we're going to be using? So we've got uh, salt, sugar, and a little bit of citric acid. Okay. And then some vanilla powder as well. Um, and then, of course, our flour, which will be the structure of the churro. Perfect. And does it matter what goes in first, or are we just kind of everything's going all together? It's all got to go in before we start stir stirring, so we'll, we'll just start with the flour. get everything in there, yep. And so, Mitch, you brought with us, or brought with you today, um, this vanilla sugar, mm. right? You mentioned to me off camera you can use a vanilla paste. A lot of people at home, I would imagine, maybe don't have vanilla sugar in their cupboard or vanilla paste. Could they just use regular vanilla extract that I feel like a lot of people will have in their cupboard? Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, obviously, the, the vanilla extract is much more common. Um, I, I like to use vanilla paste. It's more concentrated. Um, you can get it off, you know, off online. It's right. Pretty easy, but uh, vanilla extract works just fine, too. Perfect. Good to know. So here's where we're going to start mixing pretty pretty heavily. We want to work this dough. Uh, as we work it, we'll see that it's going to want to come away from the sides. Yeah. Um, and feel free to be a little, a little aggressive with it once you get it together, because it does stiffen up as you cook it. And this whole time, we're keeping this the heat on high, correct? Yep. Yep. So we want to make sure that we cook the flour so we don't have any raw flour um, flavor in our churros at the end. 
and as well as just incorporate everything. Uh, for the people at home, though, what are they looking for in this? Just make sure everything's combined, or is there like a rule of thumb? Yeah, definitely combined, but as you work it with your spatula, you'll want it to be a pretty stiff dough that will roll around and pull away from the sides. If it's okay. sticking, and you have to actually use that spatula to scrape it off, you're not quite there yet and you want to keep working it. Okay. So the one thing I will say for the people at home, this dough is tough and this is kind of a workout. I'm feeling it a little bit here, Emily. Have you, uh, have you noticed yourself getting stronger while working uh, in the culinary arts program? Slowly, but... <laughs> We're getting there? Yeah. Who needs a gym membership when you can just take classes and learn how to make really good food, right? Which I guess is kind of an oxymoron. I love it. About it but yeah, yeah it works. That's how I say so skinny. Ex yeah, exactly. Yeah. You work off your calories. Yeah. The dough is about worked through. The flour is incorporated. What is the next step here? So this is a, a recipe that follows the guidelines of a pat of shoe. Oh, so man. next we're gonna be taking this off the heat into the sand mixer. Okay. And we're gonna go in with an egg at each time to incorporate each egg, making sure that it's incorporated every time. One at a time, time. you're saying, Yep, right? one at okay. a time. All right. We have the uh, dough added to the bowl here uh, of the stand mixer, and you were mentioning to me, you, you're seeing the steam. I don't know if the cameras are picking this up, but there's a little bit of steam coming off this dough. That is a good thing, right? Yep, absolutely, that's what we're looking for. Um, that's what kind of tells us we're ready for the next step. Okay. We want to make sure that that flour is cooked out, that we don't have any raw flour, and that our eggs are gonna temper and cook while we go into that hot dough. Okay, when you say the eggs temper, what, is that, what does that mean? So we're kind of tempering the eggs to get ready for the oil, mm -hmm. um, bringing them closer to the temperature that they're gonna cook oh, at. Oh, okay, because if we add it, obviously then we just get a, poached egg in the dough. Yep, the dough could turn kind of weird. I don't want the dough to turn weird. No. All right, shall we start this? Yeah, absolutely. When we dump our eggs in, we don't want to see streaky yolk in the dough anymore. So if we want to go with our first egg. And you can, now you can kind of see that that dough's changed and is quite wet. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna watch that. As that egg works in and incorporates, that shininess is gonna go away. And then we can decide to go in with our next egg. Mitch, the uh, dough is in the piping bags. The oil we got to about 350 degrees, which is about the perfect level, right? What kind of oil are we using today, by the way? Um, right now we're using rice bran oil. Oh. Um, it's a pretty cheap oil. It has a really high smoke point. You can't smell it, right? It's, I, it's nice. Nothing, yeah. And then it's also, it's tasteless, so it doesn't impart any flavor. So very versatile oil, mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. All right, so this is about 350. Shall we do this, Emily? Yep. All right, let's do it. And now I'm seeing them start to float up here a little bit. Good sign? Yeah, great sign. Good sign. Um, okay. So we're gonna watch for color. Okay. Um, I see that they're going pretty quick. Uh, we can start kinda, I usually use the, whatever I have to strain them with, mm -hmm. to move them around a little bit and make sure they're not sticking together. Okay. And then once they're a nice golden color, um, we can just simply lift them out and Shall then go on to our sheet pan line of paper. Shall we do it? As you, as you keep frying them and you drop them out here, I'm gonna finish them in some uh, sugar, cinnamon, and powdered ginger. Oh, oh, I love ginger. That sounds delicious. So Mitch, another thing that I noticed before um, while we get these going, you added a little bit of orange zest. To yeah. This dough at the very end after doing the eggs, how come? Um, the So we just used the zest and not the, um, 
juice from it. We don't want to change the, the liquid content, mm -hmm. but the oils in the orange are going to brighten things up. All right. The best part of any Northern Delights, the tasting section here. But besides adding the, you know, the powdered sugar on top, there's a little bit more to add to these churros, uh, Chef. What do we got in front of us right now? Yeah, so we can get a little crazy with apple here. Um, we've got some apple cider reduction, mm. um, apple butter, and then some chantilly that we're gonna shave some apple ice onto. So give us a little more uh, variety to kind of swipe them through. Okay, okay. When you say apple ice, mm. what do you mean by that? It's literally just an apple frozen rock hard that we're gonna shave on a microplane. Oh, okay, okay. Well, shall we do this? Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. There we go. So when you said get crazy with it, mm. with the apple, that first bite is so like heart punch you in the mouth. Almost, it almost took me back a little bit, but yep. oh my goodness, is that good? I'm yeah, so apples have already. a lot of malic acid. Yeah, so what's you feel that right away. Mm -hmm. All right, Chef, this has been so much fun. Emily, thank you for joining us. While we go in for another one here, I think we should probably get out of here, but it's been a blast making this, chatting with you guys. We'll see you next time on Northern Delights. Thank you.